If you haven't already erased out this vertical and horizontal line, let's go ahead and do that. To show the difference between portraying a feminine and masculine neck, I have a feminine neck in right now. When we go to draw our masculine neck, you're going to go a little bit more out and away from what we did with our feminine neck. So what we're going to do is, you don't have to have these lines here. My lines are there as a reference point. Find the mouth line make an imaginary line out to the side of the face. I'm going to draw this line very heavy so that it shows up on the camera. You should not. My line is about this much wider than what I would have done with the feminine neckline. I have the feminine neckline here as a reference point. On this other side to do this neckline on the right, draw an imaginary line from the mouth line out to the right side. I have my feminine neckline in as a reference point just to show you how a little bit goes a long way. I'm going to go down and out a bit more than what I would have done for a feminine neckline. and. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line out to show you. What you should now have on your paper. The masculine neck is a bit wider than the feminine one. To do our shoulders, go from your neckline and create a slightly diagonal line going off of the page. Same as for the right side. Create a slightly diagonal line going off the page. I'm going to try a different method for the inside of the eyes on this character. Instead of doing the circles and making sure that the top of the circle overlaps the top part of the almond, I'm just going to do a wide parentheses on this side and another wide parentheses on this side. Then I can put my pupil in the center. On this eye, I'll create a very wide parentheses. If you're right-handed, you're probably going to have an easier time doing this side. If you need to turn the paper to catch the natural curve of your wrist to do this, then do so. Then on the inside of this, I'm going to add my pupil. I also need to add my reflection, which is a smaller kind of circle that overlaps the pupil, then erase what was inside of the reflection. On this side, I'm going to add a circle that kind of overlaps the pupil. Then I need to clean up the inside of the circle or the reflection so that it's not showing the pupil anymore. You don't have to draw eyelashes on the masculine character. Uh, just take a moment and about medium pressure make the top of the almond a little bit thicker. Same as on the other side. Not heavy pressure. Just about medium pressure. Make the top part of the almond. The top line needs to be thicker than the bottom line of the almond. Time to create the eyelid, which is like a bridge going over the eye. The bridge does not totally connect to the eye, though. On this side, creating a bridge that goes over the eye. 
When it comes to the eyebrows, follow along with your eyebrow line. This is where we know the eyebrow is going to start. To portray a more masculine character, they're going to have wider eyebrows, okay? So your rectangle is going to be a bit wider than what you did your feminine one. And then curve down slightly, kind of give it a little bit of a tail. Same as on the other side, try to match it. You can draw an imaginary line from the bottom of this eyebrow over to try to match the side so that, you know, one eyebrow isn't higher up than the other. Unless you're going for that, that's how you create uh, facial expressions. Like if you wanted this person's, you know, to have an emotion of that they're confused or they're curious and one eyebrow is higher than the other, then go ahead and do that. This is a zoomed in piece of paper to talk about noses. And this can be used for feminine faces or masculine faces. I want for you to just watch um, some options. Take a look at this right angle right here, these two right angles. We're just watching. If you put a parentheses right in this angle and another parentheses right in this angle, then your character is going to appear to have a slender, pointier nose, okay? There's another option, and it comes down to just moving little millimeters. So I'm erasing this out. If you want your character to have a little bit of a flatter and wider nose, just a little bit, nothing crazy, nothing too exaggerated, you just go a little bit on the outside and make your parentheses connect here to the right angle and do a, another, an ending parentheses on the outside and connect it to the right angle. It's gonna give you an ever so slightly flatter and wider looking nose for your character. There are some lines that we need to erase that are in the way. Erase out this horizontal line right here. Also, don't erase out your parentheses. Um, erase out kind of around the parentheses, leave them there. Then you can get rid of both vertical lines. I want to point out the center of this parentheses. Don't draw this, I'm just pointing it out. This is the center of this parentheses, and this is the center of this parentheses. I'm pointing out the center because we're about to put some long negative signs or minus signs slightly below the center, and also they cannot touch the parentheses, so there's some rules with them. This negative sign is below the center. Here's the center. I put in a long negative sign below it. And look how there's a space right here. It does not touch the parentheses. On this side, I can try to match it as much as I can. I'm doing a long parentheses, I mean minus sign. I'm doing a long minus sign and I'm making sure that it does not touch the parentheses. 
I can um, lift this one up a little bit to match it better. So we have these two minus signs and they do not touch the parentheses. It's time to create a shallow letter U or a wide long letter U. If you're right-handed, then you'll be doing it this way. But because I'm left-handed, I'm going to sketch slightly down and over this way and pull up into that negative sign over there. Just like in our previous lesson where we learned how to draw eyes, we're going to make some lines that give the illusion that the nose is coming up and off of the face. On this side, I'm going to have a line go a little bit almost connected to the eyebrow, pulling slightly in and aiming it towards this parentheses and slightly aiming towards the parentheses. I won't make them all the way connect because it'll end up being too distracting. On this side, it's going to be not as long of a line. I'm going to skip some space down from the eyebrow and curve slightly in and kind of aim. I'll aim towards this parentheses, but I won't bring it all the way there. Just some simple information lines. How we do a masculine mouth is pretty similar to how we did the feminine one. We'll end up changing one thing about it. So just like with the feminine one, you're going to do a extremely shallow letter U underneath this letter U. Do it even more shallow. I'm seeing on my camera that it's a little bit too far to the right. Then above it, do another very shallow letter U. However high up you put this U is how big the top lip is going to be. I might need to raise mine up a little bit more than that. Connect this left side of the U to the horizontal mouth line. Connect the right side of the U to this horizontal mouth line. If you haven't already, erase the straight line that used to be in this letter U right here. Erase that out. With the feminine mouth, we drew the entire mouth line. With the masculine mouth, we are only going to do just this bottom line here. And with our shading later in the shadow, it's going to give the illusion of a bottom lip. So it's we're not actually connecting this line to that old horizontal mouth line. We are just creating a line with a curved edge here and a curved edge there. So to do that, underneath your letter U, put in a horizontal line. Then slightly curve up this side. It's an ever so slight curve. You want the end of this line to aim here. It kind of aims to the corner of the mouth. When I curve this one, it points and aims to this corner of the mouth. We're going to add in some necklines kind of where this upside down letter V is. Skip some space down from the center of that and put in 
a slightly curved diagonal line and same as on this side except don't make it as long. We're going to end up re-sculpting the entire bottom of this jawline, okay? This would be fine if you wanted to keep your character like a young masculine character, but to make them appear a little bit older, like maybe in their late teens and 20s, find the center of your ear, which is about here. There's about this much space down here and an equal amount on top. We're going to create a light diagonal line. I just did mine heavy so that it shows up on camera. Same thing on the other side. Find the center of the ear, which is about here, and create a light diagonal line. Two, we're going to re-sculpt the chin. Uh, draw an imaginary line from the corner of your mouth straight down. You can put a measurement line. I'm going to do mine heavy so it shows up on the camera. From the corner of your mouth straight down. Line right here. I'm going to extend this chin down and erase out the old chin line. Not at the very top of that measurement line, kind of where the old chin line used to be. I'm gonna draw out and away and match it to the center of the ear. So this is a line that we're going to end up erasing. That's our old face line. Our new face line, we've drawn a little bit out and away up and um, kind of to the center of the ear. Let's go ahead and erase out the old jawline. Same thing on this side. We're going to end up erasing this, but I'm going to keep it there as a reference to figure out how far away I'm pulling from it. From where our old face line used to be, you can put your pencil there, draw out and away from it, and then up into the center of the ear. Then erase out your old face line. 